Mike Bond joined now by a man you all know very well, Dustin Poirier, the former interim UFC champ. Uh, Dustin, how are we doing, man? Doing good, brother. Out here in Louisiana, just got back from vacation. Life ain't too bad. Yeah, for sure, man. And I always usually talk to you, you know, around a fight before, after, uh, nothing on the books now, but the good people at uh, Brooks Running hooked me up with you. And when someone offers you a Dustin Poirier interview, you say yes, of course. So um, I want to ask a little bit about this relationship before we get into things. Everyone wants in on the Dustin business, right? I know Brooks is kind of a, a new relationship. Tell me a little bit about this. Bro, I've been running in Brooks for most of my training camps since I was uh, an early professional. I've been buying Brooks for year after year. My wife is running in Brooks now. And then uh, I'm not sure exactly how they got wind that I was running in their shoes. And they reached out to me, sent me a couple pair, told them thank you. Then they decided to launch the Let's Run There uh, campaign. And they thought I was a good, good fit for it. Reached out to me. And here we are still running in Brooks. Yeah, I love it. And, I, you know, I've obviously followed your career for a long time. We know you like to put in the road work. You're always posting videos and stuff out there. Um, why is kind of running being a, a big part of your conditioning the entire time? Because I know, you know, some people don't really love doing that type of road work. Yeah, I have a bunch of buddies who are like wrestled their whole life and they don't like running. But uh, it's just a way I always got in shape. It's just like old school fighting, old school boxing. You hit the You hit the road early in the morning. That's just something I've always done since I was an amateur fighter, put in the road work. And then when I'm in camp, I do probably, a, I would say, 12 or so miles a week. But every Sunday I run five, mm. you know. Are you a treadmill guy at all or do you avoid no, that? No, 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 no. no, I just like it, man. If I have to, like that's the last, last worst case scenario, but uh, I like the road. Yeah, for, for weight cutting and stuff, I imagine if you're in a hotel or don't have options, that's when you got to use the treadmill. Yeah, you got you to gotta do what you got to do, but I'm a, I'm a road guy for sure. Yeah, and I mean, I guess it's kind of like an obvious question, but how important is having like a good quality shoe for something like that when you're putting in all those miles? If you're putting in real, real road work, uh, it's super important, dude. My, that's the reason my wife switched to Brooks. I was running in them already, but she was running in like I forget what shoe it was, but she was getting shin splints and stuff like that. I've been fortunate. I never had to deal with that. But a lot of people I talk to say it hurts, you know. Uh, so the right shoes is very important, especially like the shoes that I use uh, from Brooks are gl called glycerin. They're injected with some kind of this certain foam, dude. It's like running on a cloud, man. Anybody out there, if you run, try glycerin. I used to run in their ghosts, but once I tried glycerin, I never went back. Do you think uh, running is you know always going to be part of your life, even you know when you're not having to do it for a training camp or getting down weight and stuff? No doubt about it, bro. Uh, I even run now to clear my mind. You know, I don't have a training camp and nothing to come up. Just kind of stay in shape, feel good after. But that's like my meditation. You know, when I'm on that, when I'm on the track or on the road, out there for 30, 40 minutes, like that's meditation. I feel so much better. Yeah, that's great. And uh, you mentioned that vacation that you were on. Uh, it looked like a great time, you know, posting all these costumes and stuff with the family. It looked like you guys were just having a blast out there. I'm sure over that time, you know, you had a lot of time to think around the family, heart to hearts, emotional moments. And I'm sure you made a very clear decision on your fighting future, right? And you can tell us exactly what's going to happen now. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh it, it was awesome, though. Yeah, vacation was awesome. The theme nights, every night we'd pick a different theme, dress up. Alan Joban and his wife came over a couple times. We were hanging out, uh, but they came over on Thai night. His wife is from Thailand. Her and her mother cooked a meal, dude. It was great. It was great. Also, yesterday we were packing backpacks, and Alan came sweat with us in the warehouse, man. So thank you, Alan. Yeah, I saw that. I was going to ask in a minute, but um, I'm obviously kind of half kidding about, you know, the heart to hearts, but I'm sure there was a little, some of that. I mean, did you have conversations with the people close to you about that kind of stuff or did you try to distance all that during the vacation? Of course. I mean, we had heart to hearts. We were together for a week, but not really like deep about fighting, mm -hmm. but uh, me and my wife kind of said, when we get back from vacation, we'll, because obviously you're drinking and eating whatever you want on vacation. We'll clean it up, go 30 days, uh, August, and just make a decision after that. You know, get in shape, see how you feel. So we'll we'll see, man. I, I don't know. So you feel like a September 1st kind of maybe is a, a deadline for you might have a clear idea of what's going on. 
yeah, I need to, I need to make a solid decision so I can get out of the limbo, you know, because I'm still kind of like fighting myself every day. Not, not sure what I'm doing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you think is all going to go into that? I mean, I know you're still dealing with like some injuries and stuff after the fight. Do you still need to get the surgery before you decide that? Or what are you kind of thinking on that front? So I'm supposed to have surgery on my nose in October. Hmm. But like if something, if I made a decision or something came up, popped up, I can push it back or whatever, you know. Um, I'm just thinking like who is there for me to fight, you know. Uh, but I, I just got to do this 30 days, get in shape get back on the mats hard. I haven't been able to grapple. I've been able to hit the bag and stuff, but I haven't been able to grapple live. I might be able to now. My knee's feeling better. But uh, I'm not sure about how, how structurally sound my nose is. You know, somebody face cranks me or gets like a, something across. I don't know what's going to happen. Ribs better. Ribs are getting better. That's like a time thing that just took weeks and weeks. But I, I don't know, man. I got to get back on the mats. And, and really see how I feel and see what's out there for me. And I'll make a decision. Yeah. And I know you did that interview on uh, the John Anik, Kenny Florian podcast, and they gave you like this whole list of names and you're like, it'll probably be one of those. And everyone kind of ran with it. Was that more just like in jest? Like this is such a big list. If I didn't yeah, fight exactly. you know, these guys. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was too. And they were all like, I forget what the, who the list was, but there were all some fun fights on it and stuff. I was like, ah, it will be one of those guys, you know? Yeah. Well, you kind of got it like uh, on the other side from some of those names. You know, I saw Volkanovsky, who I believe is right there behind me, uh, saying he wanted to fight you. Charles Oliveira came out today and had a similar list and you were on it. Um, today? Guess, yeah, yeah. I think he said that. He mentioned a few names and he was like, Dustin would be one of the people on there as well. Um, any of those interest you more than the other? Uh, I'd have to see the list again, but... No, nah, none of them like interest me more. Yeah, it's more just going to be a kind of your thing, right? And then you decide and then if a name comes up, because you're probably not fighting until the first quarter of next year at minimum, right? If you got to do all this physical stuff. No, nah, I think I could fight at the end of this year. Hmm. Interesting. December yeah, or something if, like that? If I felt good after the 30 days and there was a big opportunity, you know. The, yeah. the names... Obviously, the opponent matters big time, but where the timing and, and the position on the card and stuff like that, those those come into play as well. Yeah. Uh, we, we thought that we were going to get Islam and Armin in October, but it sounds like Islam is still dealing with some injuries from your fight as well um, with the hand and stuff. So it seems like the division is kind of going to move slow uh, along with your recovery too. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do with that. You know, uh, who's... Who's is Armin going to continue to like wait for Islam? I don't know when Islam's going to be back, but I saw a thing that said he might have to have surgery. So we'll see, man. The lightweight division has been so crazy over these past years. Yeah, I know. It's been hard to get like a super consistent champion who's able to fight, you know, three times a year or something. We haven't seen that in a very long time. Charles is probably the closest. Yeah, yeah. He defended a few times, right? Yeah, if they if they did an interim title and called you for that, would that be of appeal? Because I guess that would be the quickest way back to it undisputed if you get that interim <laughs> <laughs> against against who? Uh, Armin, I guess. Yeah, for sure that that interests me. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'm curious to know, speaking of the lightweight division, we saw Patty Pimlet get a big win, obviously not anywhere close to you in terms of, um, you know, ranking or a fight or anything like that. But a lot of people thought he would never be ranked or get that type of quality win like he did over uh, King Green. Were you impressed by that performance? Yeah, dude, he's another one of those guys who's like, his trajectory is like, if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to be, not that he's not massive, but he's on the right track, dude. When you talk like that and People like your personality. You go out there and finish guys, you know, vets and legends like Bobby. Um, I mean, of course, I, like going into the fight, I knew he could win. But to finish Bobby Green that way, I, I was very surprised. Yeah, first to submit him since January 2009, which is an insanely long time. Yeah, for yeah. sure, man. That's crazy. That's, I saw uh, oh, he's God. talking the talk, walking the walk, man. Yep. I saw Chael Sonnen say that uh, Michael Chandler should fight him since he's not going to get Conor McGregor. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> dude. Next best thing to Conor, he said. Jeez, I don't, I don't, I don't know about all that. <laughs> uh, they, they, they didn't announce a date on that. I know they said it is happening, but they're still. 
Yeah, no, no date. Uh, I think people are kind of talking about December at this point because all the pay-per-views are seemingly filling up before then. So that's that's a long time away, though, still. Yeah, man. I mean, it's already been a few years since he, a couple years since he fought, right? Yeah. And I, I know you had the uh, the touch the pinky toe tweet. I keep seeing people being like, Dustin is going to steal this fight from Michael Chandler, or if he wanted to, he really could push for it. Um, there, there's no thoughts of that, right? You mentioned end of the year. You could you could ramp this up and maybe get that fight if you really wanted it, right, with Connor? I'm not sure. I think they probably, I'm sure they promised it to Chandler, especially with him waiting two years. That would be such a, a, a bad move, you know? <laughs> yeah but uh this is a fight game we'll see yeah and i have to ask this one i'm sure you've been tagged in it you know since overnight uh that interview colby covington did where he kind of talked about fighting you and saying it would be the biggest and best fight that could be made in the ufc and then talked about an encounter you guys had at a steakhouse in miami a couple of weeks ago or months ago a lot of people didn't seem to think his story was true um did you see it and if so how accurate was it yeah when i woke up this morning uh Nah, bro, the dude is a, such a liar. The dude is such a liar. Um, I'm not even going to give him the airtime. He, he, it's a lie. Yeah, I think we ran into each other. Yeah, that that's the true. That's true. But the way he said it went down is completely not true. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the comments were like, "Why would Dustin fight him in a steakhouse? We know what happened the last time he got in a fight in a steakhouse, and the police got involved." Yeah, man. That and that's what he wants. He wants you to talk about him, and he, and you're doing that, so. Yeah, no, we can move on from that. Just kind of had to be mentioned since you were getting tagged all over the place. But I wanted to ask about something you said off the top there about uh, the backpack drive. I saw that photo you did full truck with them. Uh, that's coming up this weekend, right? Saturday. Yeah, uh, we got about fifteen hundred, maybe a little, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more, but fifteen hundred backpacks filled with school supplies for the year, and that's uh, this Saturday. The pickup is is nine a.m. until supplies last. Wow. And um, that's what the fifth year you've done that or seventh? You've done that from the beginning, right? Yeah, this is our fifth year. But the first year we did just uh, specifically for a school. But then in the last four years, we've been doing for every school in the in the parish, Lafayette Parish. Anybody could come, but it's for supplies for Lafayette Parish school system. Yeah. Their list. That's awesome, man. And uh, speaking of the charity, I know you'd said uh, to Ariel Hawani a few weeks ago that uh, maybe Habib was looking at buying the fight kit from 302. Has there been any progress or updates on that yet? Yeah, he purchased it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, How much? 30,000. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, On top of the last one from your fight too. Wow. That's, that's great stuff. So have you sent it all to him yet or? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's been sent. Okay. That's very cool. That's a great piece of news. Um, did he like reach out to you personally? Did you guys chat or anything or? Ali actually reached out to me and said, Hey, Khabib was interested in buying it. I said, let me know. Cause, uh, they, the people on eBay, like I told Ariel, the people on eBay canceled the bid at mm-hmm. the last minute. They outbid the last person. Like, dude, this is just crazy. But, uh, he came through, we shipped it off. Backpacks are getting filled. Man, that's awesome. So what, what's kind of the next big goal now that you're uh, through this? No fight on like the super close horizon, but to get that money coming in, what does that that do for what you guys can set up in the back half of the year and into next year? Well, we definitely have the Thanksgiving. We do that every year, mm-hmm. the family meal pickup uh, for Thanksgiving. So that's another big one that we do that takes a lot of uh, planning and a lot of labor. Uh, but besides that, you know, we'll see. I'm sure we're going to do some small stuff here and there in the community. Uh, actually, a police officer. When I was on vacation, there was a stand, there was a hostage situation, I believe, and something bad happened. But the, the police officer lost his life, and he left behind five kids. So we're working on that right now, seeing what we can do. Um, we're gonna definitely donate five backpacks to the family, but uh, we'd also like to make sure they're good on school uniforms for the year and 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 things like that. So we're working that out. That's probably a goal we're gonna do. Awesome. And uh, just before I get you out of here, since we're short on time, uh, you saw that. Uh, half your podcast, Megan Olivia and I did, where we kind of threw the praise on you. You had two of the best fights of the year so far. Um, maybe you could get one more. I don't know if anyone's had three fight of the year candidates in one year before. That would be insane. But the, this next month, when you're thinking this over, um, could you say right now, like what the gut feels like? I know you've talked about it a fair bit. You talked about the night of the fight since like, w- what do you think? Do you think you, we do another fight here? Cause you talked to Megan who worked with you uh, in Vegas. John Anik said the same. They all say they think you're going to fight again. Dude, I, I, inside of me, it's like a, I'm battling it. Like I, I feel like I can't leave, you know, I can't walk away. Cause I still know I have, I still could do it. 
Mm-hmm. It's like I know I could beat these guys. Yeah, it's like an internal struggle. I'm, it's a battle for sure. I'm uh, I want to fight, you know, but we'll see. Isn't that the scariest thing though? The uh, the pursuit of trying to go out on a high. I mean, isn't a title fight? It's fighting as well as you did a, a great high too, and that's what we've seen. You know, some of the historically great fighters struggle with right when they continue to try to chase that final moment and if it doesn't work out then it gets only harder yeah nothing's guaranteed in here and and what kind of i don't know what kind of battle i'm going to be in if i lose two in a row i've never lost two in a row you know nothing's guaranteed in this but if i do walk away i definitely want to walk away on a high note and a a win you know i don't want to walk away on an l yeah for sure well i know you will make the right decision for yourself and your family you have good people around you and a you know amazing head on your shoulders Dustin. so we all have faith that whatever decision you make will be the right the right one so uh hope you find the piece you're looking for of this next 30 days thank you brother i really appreciate that